Hi, I'm Trevor Conkergood from Sunset Stitches. Welcome to my new video series called The Magic of Janome Digitizer MBX Software. If you do machine embroidery, then you'll love this series because I'm going to be showing um, new and interesting embroidery techniques and I am going to be showing people just how easy and fun it is to use the MBX software to create embroidery designs and not only create embroidery designs, but what about all of those designs that you already have? You can use the MBX software to open those designs and add to them or make changes to them. And so really to me, having embroidery software is very important um, if you have an embroidery machine because it really means the sky's the limit. You can create anything that you want. Now I have a series of classes called Digitizer Workshop that is aimed at teaching people to learn to create your own embroidery designs and to learn to use the MBX software. And so my goal with the, this Magic of MBX series is to help new people discover um, just how much fun you can have with embroidery software and creating your own designs. So yeah, you may be watching this class on YouTube, which is great, but what you're really gonna want to do is actually collect the video downloads um, because the download is gonna come with not only a high resolution copy of this video, um, but it's also going to come with a printable page that you can sort of collect and makes it easy to review the topics of the videos. Um, and more importantly, it's going to come with the actual embroidery designs and artwork that I use in these classes. So all of that said, this is my new series, The Magic of MBX Software. And what I'd like to do is pop over to my MBX workspace and just start showing you a little bit of that magic. So to get started, we're going to pop over to the MBX desktop and just do a quick review of what you see and what the tools are, just in case you're new and have never really seen the MBX software. And then what I'm gonna do is open up a design and add some lettering to that. And I'm just gonna show you now, this is the design that we're gonna work on. And of course, this will be included with the download. So it's a beautiful monogram uh, holder. So we'll add our own lettering to that. And yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead now and pop over to the workspace and you'll notice right away pretty much all the tools are grayed out. Um, that's because whenever something's gray it means you need to do something first before you can use it. In this case I would either need to start a new design or open a design to be able to use most of the tools. So if I click on new you'll notice right away I get kind of an empty workspace. Um, you can see my embroidery hoop and all of the tools have become or most of the tools have become available now. Um, just a quick orientation up at the top, you've got sort of your standard Windows type things, new, open, save, print, copy, paste. Uh, this is a drop down menu where you can select the style of embroidery machine that you may have. Um, below there, you've got a drop down list to choose the embroidery hoops that are for that machine. If you don't have a Janome machine, you can add your own embroidery hoops uh, so that it's specific to what your needs are. Um, below that toolbar, here I have kind of a viewing toolbar uh, with things like zoom in, zoom out, uh, display the rulers or the grids or display my embroidery hoop on and off. Um, just below that, this is a lettering toolbar that's used for creating and sort of new lettering objects. We've got a layout toolbar over here. Um, on the left hand side, I've got my digitizing tools. This is what you would use to create new embroidery elements. Um, you'll notice the automatic digitizing tools are still grayed out. That's because we would need to have some artwork on our screen to be able to automatically digitize. So that's the idea is if it's something's not available, it means you'll need to do something first. Um, down at the bottom here, I've got my editing and selecting toolbar. And yeah, so we'll, you'll learn about all these things through me. Um, certainly in today's class, we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna say open, and it's gonna automatically open up um, a window. And that window is pointed or looking in the last folder that I created. And you can click on this arrow and navigate to you know any of the folders on your computer. Um, while I'm here, I should probably highlight that here at the bottom, it says files of type. And right now it's looking specifically for the Janome Digitizer MBX Jan format. Uh, but if I click on that list, I could choose 
you know, Jeff or So or many other popular embroidery formats, PES or DST or whatever it is that you're looking for, um, it's probably available. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up this embroidery design, and this is one that's um, been created as a placeholder for monogramming. Or I guess you could put a name in here or whatever you want. Um, be really beautiful for bed linens, or maybe you want to make some sort of custom stationery uh, or something for your desk. Um, it's just really nice monogramming holder. Now, what we're going to do is use the tools to add some lettering to this. So what I'll do, here is my lettering toolbar. And I have two main tools, one's for monogramming, one's for kind of straight up lettering. And I'm going to go to that monogramming tool to start. And you'll notice it gives me kind of like a little window pops up, like a little monogramming wizard. And I'll just go ahead and sort of get it ready. So I'm going to type in J and A and N. It's not my initials. It's just kind of short for the Jan format or Janome, whatever. Uh, below that, I'm going to choose a style. So these are different, I guess, layouts for monograms, typical layouts. I'm going to choose this 13. It's kind of a rounded one. Um, you can choose your font in here. There's literally dozens and dozens of fonts, all of the built-in embroidery fonts, not to mention all of the true type fonts that are available uh, just from Windows. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, we could change the size in here or the color, but really this is all just a starting point. In other words, I'm going to be able to modify those things even after I close this monogramming wizard. And I'm, I'm not here to teach you how to use it today. That's what my digitizer workshop classes are all about. Today I really just want to show you what you can do and inspire you. So I'll leave it at that. Here's my JAN. Looks a little bit big for the hole. See, I don't quite fit. Notice I can just grab on a corner handle and size it down until it seems sort of like the appropriate size. I could squish it a little bit. I can change the color of the embroidery to make it match the rest of it. Um, what I'm going to do is use my lettering art tool, I'm sorry, my reshape tool, and I'm going to increase that envelope shape that we've got that makes it look kind of rounded like this. And yeah, just so I'm just going to tweak it up a little bit until it looks just how I like it, and you put it into there. And that's the idea. It can be that easy to open up a design. Now, notice that I've got my embroidery hoop on my screen. And if I wanted to, I could, um, I'll just show down here, this little magic pointing finger, this is the select tool. And if I click on the word Jan, I can select it and I could move it to any location. Um, if I click and drag a box around a series of you know, parts of the design, I can select all of those and then move that to wherever you want. So if you want to create a layout that has multiple embroidery designs within your hoop, um, you can easily do that. I can change the size or the color, really anything I can influence the type of underlay stitching, the sky's the limit. But it's really that easy to create your own embroidery design. So if you've collected, uh, like I have, probably hundreds of embroidery designs, MBX will make it amazingly easy to use those designs, resize them, add things to them, take parts out of them. Yeah, so this is the first beginning of learning about the MBX magic. Now what I'm going to do is just reset myself and show you another demonstration where we'll maybe create some new embroidery. Okay, I'm going to start again. Uh, but this time I'm going to create a monogram from artwork as opposed to an embroidery design because you don't always have the exact embroidery design you want. But when you can, you know, sort out artwork, well, the sky's the limit. There's all kinds of artwork available. So what we'll do, we'll just pop back over to my workspace. And before I actually get into digitizing, I'll just show you what we're going to make. So this is the idea. We're going to create this fancy little swirl from an image. And then I'm going to add my own lettering and do some modifications to, you know, make it perfect. Uh, so, okay, we'll hop, pop over to the workspace. I'm just going to simply hit new for a sort of new empty embroidery design. Um, you can see that it's based on the new MC15000 machine type and the 140 millimeter hoop. Uh, all that said, what I need to do is actually use the drop-down menu for image and insert an image. 
And again, it gives a little box that says open and it's looking in the same folder um, that we were looking in before that I made for today's class. The difference here is it's looking for image files instead of embroidery files. And so I'll just pop up and show you that right here, I've got um, some sort of generalized image files like bitmap and JPEG, PNG, PXF, EPS. Um, while I'm on the topic, I'm just going to select this image. There's only one there and say open. Um, but while I'm on that topic of artwork, if I switch over, this actually this program actually comes with Corel Draw, which is a very powerful graphics program. And when I switch to Corel Graphics mode, you'll see that um, I have even more formats available. If I say import here, uh, we have a large list of different formats that are available. Um, so you can see that there's all sorts of different Illustrator files, vectorized graphics. Um, yeah, so the, really the sky's the limit when it comes down to artwork. Now, all that said, we're not going to work in Corel Draw today. I'm just going to see how I can just switch from embroidery mode over to graphics mode and then back to embroidery mode. So while I'm in embroidery mode and I have an image on my screen, so let's just take a look. See, it's really nothing more than um, some orange swirly lines. And anyway, I'm going to select that image. And as soon as I do my instant sort of click to design instant tool becomes available. And I'm just going to go ahead and run that. And you'll see that it creates the embroidery design almost instantly for us based upon that artwork. And so um, that's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that up to the top of our embroidery hoop. And maybe I can even click on the image and just get rid of it. I don't need that anymore. We've created our embroidery design. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll select that embroidery design. I'll say copy and then paste. Now, you probably didn't see anything because of course it pasted it right on top of the original. Um, but what I'll do is I'll use this tool to flip it. So down at the bottom, I've got flip vertically. And once it's been flipped over, I'm just gonna click and drag to move that to be kind of at the lower side of our hoop. So you can see where I'm going with this. I got a topper and a bottom and now I wanna add some lettering down the center. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use my lettering tool. So similar to the monogram tool, when I click on the lettering tool, it opens up a box. And generally, I need to put my words in here. So I'll start with my name. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll choose a font. Now, you can see right away that there's literally dozens and dozens of different embroidery fonts that are available. Um, dozens and dozens that come with your software. And then even more, see these ones that say TT beside them? Those are the fonts that are your Windows fonts. And so any font that you can download and add to your computer can be used for embroidery. So there's all kinds of really cool ones. And yeah, so basically, if you don't know what font you want, you can just click on one and sort of start from there. What I'll do is... Um, just say, okay, I can choose all these things, but a lot of times I do that visually. In other words, I'm just gonna say, okay, put my name in, pick a font, whatever, say, okay. Um, it tells me, if you're not sure, it always has a bit of a prompt at the bottom. It says, press your mouse to start the text. In other words, wherever I click my mouse will become the center of my text. And so there's um, the word that I made. Now, maybe what I'll do is just zoom in a little bit. Um, I'll hide my embroidery hoop so you can see the whole thing. And now, if you don't like the font that you've got, because maybe I'm not sure this is the kind of style that I want for my monogram, um, I could pop this drop down menu and change the font. But another thing I can do is I can actually just scroll through the fonts by scrolling the wheel on my mouse. And it allows me to see the my exact lettering in all of these different fonts. And so that makes it kind of an easy way to scroll through until you find a font that, I guess, you know, meets the 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 objective or you know, strikes your fancy one that you like and so yeah I'll go through and pick something um, doesn't really matter but I kind of wanted something yeah, like this a little bit more sort of sort of and it's not scripty but what I really want to do is I want to take this font and for my monogram I want to have like kind of extra large capital letters so I wanted to show you how I can do that I'm gonna zoom in a little closer select that word by clicking on it and I'm going to use my reshape tool down here I have a reshape tool and when I turn on the reshape tool you'll notice all my letters get little sort of handles or little diamonds above them and you can use that to actually move a letter along your baseline to get any spacing but when I click on those handles I get new little handles 
that enabled me to, I'll just go ahead and make the letter C substantially bigger than the rest of the word. And if I zoom out, you can see what I've done. Now, I want to do the same thing to the letter T. To make it easy, I'm just going to click on my ruler here, and I'm going to put a guideline. Sort of shows me how big the letter C is, so that when I select on the letter T, I can use that guideline to make sure that I get the T and the C both, um, you know, kind of that same height. Now, you can play with these, uh, visually modify the lettering, um, just as an example, if the letter spacing seems kind of not perfect, appropriate, you can use that reshape tool again and, you know, slide the letters along until they sort of seem like they visualizing, sort of visually look perfect, or I guess just make you happy. Um, if you don't like some of the letters, just as an example, I'm not sure I like the letter N. I, ha I like the font, I like everything about it, but this letter N, I don't know why it has a tail. So what I'm gonna do, I'll zoom in really closely and show if I click right on the outline of the letter N, it actually shows me all of the digitized points for the letter N, and I'm going to select a bunch of them and delete them. And then I'll just move the last two down, and maybe what I'll do is I'll even make it kind of flare out to match the, the opposite side. So I'll click on the shape and it adds a new set. And remember, my goal today is not to teach you how to do this. That's what my digitizer workshop classes are about. I just really wanted to show you how fun and easy it can be to make your own embroidery designs or monograms. So yeah. Um, so anyway, you put it all together, maybe I'll select everything, give it all one color, um, turn my hoop back on, and just decide, okay, um, everything's good, but the lettering doesn't quite fit, so I'll just grab on a little handle and sort of squish it um, until it seems like it's going to be the perfect size, and then, yeah, I'll um, maybe, you know, you can tweak these things to get everything just how you want it so I'll maybe bring this down and bring the other one up and yeah I think that's pretty much it so that's the idea for the monogram uh, for today I made two quick monograms they'll both be available as part of the download for today's class and so I guess more about that um, the idea with the MBX Magic classes is I'm making them for my friends from Janome, and I work with uh, many, many of the different dealers that sell Janome software. And so I would like you to visit your Janome dealer and ask them to, if they don't already, to participate with the MBX Magic classes. They'll be able to provide you with a copy of this class uh, for free, and you can. I guess download it, watch the video at home, um, but more importantly, you'll be able to collect the rest of the series because this is just the first class. I intend to put out a new one every month. And so you need to get together with your Genome dealer, have them get involved, and then they'll be able to provide you with a new class every month with some new embroidery designs, some new embroidery technique that you can learn about. And yeah, hopefully I'll inspire more people to use Genome MBX software and Consequently, more people will be interested in my Digitizer Workshop classes. So it's a win-win for everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's class. Uh, if you'd like to know more about me and my classes, please visit my website, which is sunsetstitches.com. And if you need to find out something specifically from me, send me an email. It's trevor at sunsetstitches.com. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the video. Enjoy the embroidery designs and happy embroidering. Okay, bye-bye.